Okay, so up next, we have Corbin with the NetBSD project talking about dev setup, a local development environment for any platform. Yeah, thank you very much. So if you don't mind, then let's get started. Thank you for joining. As was said, I'm Pierre Pochere, Corbin. Uh, we're going to introduce package source, actually. Uh, this is the, the plan for this session. We're going to use package source in a particular way. Uh, I had to make some changes to make it fully work. And then dev setup happened, and hopefully you will get to see how it came in and how, how it happened, what it can be useful for, and hopefully uh, get to use it yourself. Let's see. So let's start with uh, package source. So to introduce package source, I have to speak about NetBSD. Uh, NetBSD, as you know here, is an operating system based on Fallout 3 BSD originally. It's been ported on 16 CPU types, so portability is a, a really um, a strong aspect here, one of the key aspects of the system, as has been, um, as the tradition with BSD systems, you have the base systems uh, developed as a set independently from the packages, and the packages, the third party software, actually comes from the package source project. Um, another noteworthy aspect is that uh, NetBSD is uh, still using CVS for development, just like uh, package source does, actually. So like mentioned, package source is the official source of packages for NetBSD, but it's also available for other operating systems. Um, NetBSD is very portable, like I mentioned, so 16 architectures are supported by NetBSD and also package source, but on top of that, uh, 23 other operating systems are supported by package source, uh, even if you count Linux as just one operating system. So this is a great aspect of the system, it actually works for much more than just uh, NetBSD. And I mentioned CVS, but the project is also mirrored on, on GitHub um, with, through the automatic conversion uh, project, uh, used with care, but basically it's there on GitHub if you want, inside the NetBSD organization. So if you actually uh, clone it, which we are doing here, um, we use a GitHub account in this case, we can use SSH. And uh, we're gonna have a look at the project structure, um, how it's organized, so we basically cloned it, we can change folder into it and have here a directory listing. We notice we have a bunch of folders, uh, but among that, thankfully, we have documentation, a readme file. So let's open it with my favorite editor in this case. So we are inside Vim. We can see package source is the default man package manager for NetBSD and SmartOS, um, among others actually. And not only that, but we also have, uh, there's a note that uh, we can use it in unprivileged mode uh, and can install it this way. So uh, let's see what this means. Uh, we keep scrolling and it actually mentions to use package source on other operating systems than NetBSD, you actually have to bootstrap it. And this is the, the procedure. Uh, so this raises a question, can we actually bootstrap package source, but also in unprivileged modes, uh, like without any privileges. Can we use this to use package source everywhere? So let's try that. We're going to bootstrap package source, so we go back to the, the base folder, and we notice, just like documented, we have the bootstrap folder here, so we're going to change folder into it. Uh, here we are, we list the files, and we see we have, as mentioned, documentation for most, if not all, operating systems supported. And there is a generic readme file, so we're going to open it. And we're not going to open every other readme file, don't worry, like, uh, we don't have time for that today. Um, so let's do that, open Vim again. So, uh, what do we have? Uh, the bootstrap uh, program, some short usage information. So to try to get package source working on a system, we have to try this, but it mentions uh, a detail, we have to do it as a root. But that's not what I wanted. Um, so let's see if we can actually use it in a different way. Um, so we check Bootstrap directly, we run it. We have the actual usage screen, not the simplified one from the, the documentation. And we can see there is an unprivileged uh, flag here. And so let's just try that. Uh, so we run the command. We have a, good, uh, a few CPU calls. We can do that with multiple jobs. Uh, and when this is done, we actually have a nice message telling us, thank you for using package source. Yeah, thank you for providing it. 
Uh, we have to add a few variables, whatnot. Um, so actually, let's be curious and look at the source code for, for packet source and see how the unprivileged mode is actually implemented. What does it change? What does it do? This is actually implemented in the subfolder make, unprivileged.mk. Uh, we see right away that some variables from packet source uh, change the, the behavior. In this case, we have the unprivileged modes, which can be enabled with yes or no. This is for the uh, basically the make.conf configuration file from package source. Uh, we also have an unprivileged user, which defaults to your own user logically. Same for the group. Uh, same for the list of groups that you have access to. Then we continue. We have a bunch of variables, actually just two here. Um, the package users vars and the package groups vars, which restrict which users and groups can be created. It makes sense since we have no privileges, we're not supposed to be able to create users and groups. And so this basically sets, um, when this value is empty, this, the, the, um, the package source knows it cannot create any user. And if you happen to be able to create one, you can add the value here. So we continue uh, into the, the um, unprivileged implementation. Uh, we can see here that uh, it also disables user and group creation here by, um, yes, this variable here, package create as a group. Then additionally, it overrides the CH group and CH own access, uh, basically uh, forcing them to always succeed even if they are not able to. So this is quite transparent for us. And in addition, it will not try to register any shells. So even if you install bash as in privileged mode, it will not try to modify your slash HTC shells, for instance, on NBSD, or affect the system in, in any way like that. Okay, so we've gone this far, and now uh, why not run services with package source, which it can do on, in a, on a normal system. But in this case, let's try it without privileges, and uh, on any system actually. And thankfully there is a package doing supposedly just that. Uh, in package tools, it's called rc.suber, which is coming from NetBSD actually. Uh, it's part of the init system to boot NetBSD, and it's responsible for running services. Uh, just as mentioned, if we open the description file for the package, um, it allows us to use, to take advantage of the NetBSD uh, RC system anywhere. So can we use this package to run unprivileged services then? It should work, because normally you can do that. But if we try on a NetBSD system in this case, we can see that this package is only available for these other platforms but not, uh, in this case, well, actually Darwin, but actually it didn't work for uh, NetBSD initially when I started looking into that. But also, uh, unprivileged mode is not supported. Uh, this package is not available in unprivileged mode, which I thought this is a shame. So we have a challenge on our hands, and let's change a few things, see if we can actually fix it. And this, um, the first part is actually very easy. So if we open the make file for this package, for package tools RC server, we can actually add NetBSD to the list of platforms supported. Okay, check. Then we can just remove uh, this variable, not for unprivileged. And this should already help a lot. You can see here that I added the variable. I'm going to introduce that uh, in a moment. Um, where are we? Okay, I showed that. We continue, and I also added a function to the suburb, um, the copy of the RC suburb file into this package uh, to have the load RC config var, which allows us to read etcrc.conf in package source instead of uh, the system itself. And like I mentioned, I had to introduce the sysconf base uh, variable, which points to the configuration files from the base system. Um, it's typically set to slash etc, but in unprivileged mode, we want to have everything provided by package source. We cannot rely on the system to provide anything because we don't know if we are on NetBSD or not. We don't know what's there or not. And this is actually important for RC scripts. We're going to provide our own RC scripts from the packages in unprivileged mode. So we need to be able to tell uh, package source where to find the RC scripts instead of hard coding them in slash etc. So I had to introduce that uh, and make a few changes in different parts. One part where I had to do that was the, the bootstrap. So adding it here, adding it to the make.conf uh, configuration file. 
uh, adding it, of course, to the documentation and the default <laughs> configuration file here. Um, and this meant that I had to update RC scripts in order to remove the hard-coded flash ETC and replace it with Cisco based. So then if you're on package source privilege in NetBSD, it defaults to flash ETC, doesn't affect the behavior. But if you're in unprivileged mode uh, on any system and you want to run services from package source, this then allows the system to find RC server and the RC scripts and so on. So in this example, uh, which is PHP FPM, it was just a matter of uh, changing that. Um, so in practice, I looked at quite a few packages. I already converted uh, this many packages. I think it's about 20. I'm still missing a lot, obviously, because package source has a lot more packages than just that. Uh, notably, I have to look at PostgreSQL, uh, MySQL, MariaDB, and so on. So now I want to dive into what we can do uh, with this. Now that we can run unprivileged local services with package source, uh, if we combine the portability of package source with the ability to run services on any system, I think we can actually enable one new use case for package source. And this is what led me to create dev setup uh, for local, uh, as a local development environment. Uh, right now this is hosted on GitHub in my Corbin uh, namespace. Um, so as you can see, it's fairly simple so far. We can do the same as before, just clone it, see what happens. We see that thankfully there is a bit of documentation and we can do just like before the right thing and open it. See what I wrote earlier if I, if I don't remember. Uh, so we have, like I mentioned, the development environment. Uh, in this case, everything is built from source. To get started, we simply run dev setup in it. All right. Uh, I don't know about you, but I usually don't um, pipe curl into my shells. So let's have a short look at dev setup, uh, what's inside. Uh, even if I wrote this, uh, it's, it's always a good practice. We can see that we're going to use Git, uh, or we can probably guess it from that. Then we continue, uh, skip some lines, obviously. We can see that by default, uh, it's probably going to run fast CGI somewhere on localhost, um, install a bunch of packages, uh, maybe even run an LDAP server with the default password here, and a bunch of services. So here we have Dovecot, Nginx, Postgres, a uh, bunch of others. Um, but we have to notice also that the default upstream in this case is from HPSD. Uh, so what's that? It's a fork of NetBSD actually. I didn't like the orange, so I made it blue. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> actually, NetBSD, as I mentioned, is still stuck to uh, CVS for the main development. And I like to work with Git locally, play with branches, uh, do a bunch of, of work that Git allows me to do and not CVS, especially when working offline. So I've done that a few years ago. Uh, the project lost a bit of momentum, but on the other hand, some HBZ developers became NetBZ developers, so I, it's still a success. But this is an aside, actually. Let's go back into dev setup. Um, we want to look uh, at the file. We continue a bunch of variables. We can notice at the top that there's a configuration file that's going to be read if it's available or it is documented too. So you can, affect, I mean you can change the local behavior without modifying the script. This is usually useful. We scroll down, we can uh, guess what the usage clone is going to look like. So this is the main function. We're gonna have uh, different parameters. In it is here, we're going to be able to probably install packages, start and stop services and so on. And this is actually the case. We have the usage screen here. Uh, we can guess what it's going to look like. And there you go. So a bit of information for each command, actually. Starting stopping services here is at the bottom. Installing packages, indeed. There's also something about the environment. Uh, so the commands are highlighted here. So let's just see how this works. Uh, in my uh, vision of things, uh, this is actually package source simplified. Uh, which is usually uh, a good thing to have. Uh, so I mentioned the environment um, command, it actually typically outputs this. You can directly source it into your, your shell. And so you're gonna have, if you install Go directly, the Go path being set, the man path, the path to have the commands from this environment directly added to your, uh, to your shell. 
So basically, dev setup provides every package from package source can be managed from a single script. You benefit from package sources uh, release cycle with the releases every three months. You also have security updates and it supports every major and most niche platforms. So I think this is pretty awesome. Uh, it enables a lot of things, including for instance, cross-platform development, meaning you can have a team with someone using Windows, someone using Mac OS, someone else using Linux, doesn't matter. Everybody has the same environment, the same versions. It works with the same tooling. And DevSetup actually runs local services and configures them by default. So you can have an open LDAP service working for everybody, email setup working for everybody for local tests. And also importantly, it deploys consistent versions across every system. So you don't have to worry, am I going to use Python 3.8 or 3.9 or whatnot? Whatever the default here can work for everyone. We saw that indeed package also offers an unprivileged mode, so you don't need to have administrative rights. Everybody can run everything inside their own user, create a new user for, for that if necessary. Um, this is very flexible. You also benefit from further security features from package source, like the auditing system. So basically inside the package tools, uh, package install uh, package, which is the default uh, to manage the packages actually you have the package admin command, you can, which can fetch the list of vulnerabilities as maintained by NetBSD. And then the audit packages command will tell you all of the vulnerabilities which are known on your system. Unfortunately, right now there are lots, but yeah, that, that's also my full-time job actually. Uh, but uh, speaking of jobs, this is actually part of the daily cron jobs in NetBSD. So you can actually do the same uh, through dev setup on your own system and for your team to make sure that everybody also uh, is not vulnerable to, to anything. Uh, by default, DevSetup also runs a local web server. Uh, I think it's Nginx um, that I configured. Uh, and it even provides links to the documentation installed by package source. Uh, this is not dynamic yet. So if you modify the list of packages pre-installed, it will not match, but uh, that's something that I could improve. Certainly there are a few more things that um, I could improve. So let's look at uh, the challenges that I encountered or maybe the, the shortcomings which are still um, found now. So package source, unlike its name, also supports binary packages and unfortunately they've set up only knows about sources. Um, this is also for good reasons. Since we don't know where it's going to be installed, some people will use Linux, some people will use Windows, different architectures. It, we would have to provide binary packages for every system. But on top of that, um, every user has a different location where they install the, the, the software. So the binary packages would have to know about that. So basically this is not really possible except if you abstract all of that away. However, if you master your own environment, you can also create binary packages with dev setup and then spread them and use them uh, with the tooling from package source uh, as, as usual. Um, so this is one maybe uh, important issue. However, uh, there are more things that could be looked into. Uh, like I mentioned, there are more services which have to be converted to the um, uh, sysconf base variable. Um, then we could consider maybe importing dev setup into package source itself if um, it's useful enough, if people like it enough. Uh, could improve the documentation always, especially the one which is generated uh, as part of the uh, web interface right now. Maybe there could be a web interface to manage the software or install more things and so on, which should be straightforward since there's no need for privileges, no need for root or anything. So binary packages were mentioned. Um, then also, um, maybe we could use dev setup to generate containers or generally do this also with package source, improve the tooling uh, to maybe create images uh, and so on and so forth. So then I will welcome your suggestions about uh, what should be coming next. Uh, now, uh, before we get to the Q&A, I would like to uh, give a few pointers. So where to find everything. So obviously NetBSD is here at netbsd.org. Uh, as I mentioned, it's also available on GitHub right now with the automatic conversion. Uh, the same goes for package source, uh, package source.org. Then there is also an excellent package browser online. If you want to know where is what, uh, you can search for package names and then know which subfolder it's going to, to find it, to find in. 
uh, with package source SE. Then HBSD is also at hbsd.org. I still maintain it somehow, even if I don't really advertise it. Uh, then dev setup is on GitHub as well in, under Corbin. Uh, I also just imported it into HBSD as one more mirror. Usually it doesn't hurt. Then to conclude, I uh, hope you have enjoyed the presentation. Um, I, I'm curious to know what you will do with dev setup. And if I have to summarize it right now, you can enjoy most of package source, thousands of packages, security updates, consistent environments across platforms and across possibly distributed teams. So now this is up to you. Uh, and in the meantime, thank you for listening. And if you want to reach me in any way, uh, you have a, uh, my email address is here, my Twitter handle, and links to actually my company, um, different networks, HPSD, and so on. Yeah, so that's for the setup. Do you have any questions? Yeah, uh, can you go to the microphone? mentioned multi-platform support yeah um, when I tried uh, our package source on um, previously Linux and Illumos uh, mm -hmm. last December or so I ran into a lot of breakage uh, including FreeBSD where it uh, won't even uh, fully bootstrap have you done some work on uh, that too uh, I myself use usually macOS or NetBSD native so I didn't run into these issues unfortunately I ran into some issues on macOS where I had to do fixes to bootstrap, for instance. And actually, right now, to be honest, the bootstrap is broken on packet source current. I don't know why. But yes, indeed, NetBSD is the focus. Let's say, let's call it tier one. And then even though other platforms are supported, they sometimes lag a bit behind. So the best you can do is actually to report the issues you have. So we can see them and maybe uh, developers using FreeBSD or Illumos and so on can look into it. Uh, Jorg, you want to add to that? questions if not I can let you enjoy the, the lunch before everyone else yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right thank you
used to be five, six active developers, but then most of them went into NetBSD proper, which is great actually. It was a way for them to uh, get a name for themselves and then be invited by NetBSD because it's a bit more tedious to become a NetBSD member than HBSD. Basically, if you give me like a PGP key and SSH key, I, I just add you to the, uh, I just give you a commit bit and, and that's it, yeah. Um, so yeah, it allowed me to bring more people um, faster, which was great, yeah. Can I have the biggest problem that we've got with BSDs? Yeah, yeah. Because we, we use FreeBSD. Yeah, I'm actually trying to start now a new initiative to uh, get every BSD major project to talk to each other about drivers and yeah. see if we can have like regular meetings and... So there's a lot of yeah. things that... NetBSD yeah, has this, OpenBSD has that, FreeBSD has the other, and yeah. there's a lot of bits that all of them would benefit if we could get more cross-talk. Exactly, yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah.